Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Hands On SAP Dev, with, this time with me, Q Macro, DJ. Uh, great to have you this, well, it's a, actually, the sun is just coming up. Um, well, no, I guess it was up uh, half an hour ago. Uh, I can just see the sort of the, the orange light in the sky over there. I'm just looking through the window. Um, it was a, yeah, quite a nice morning this morning, cold, slight breeze. It was really windy yesterday. Uh, here in Manchester, but uh, quite a pleasant run. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Jodell. I'm going to say good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. I'm going to say good morning. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, Shakti. Good morning from to Philadelphia. Good to Philadelphia. So that's good evening. Good night to Philadelphia. Amazing. Thank you for joining, Phil. Good evening. Hope you got your glass of wine ready. So cheers. Cheers. Here we go. And Vladimir's. Good morning to you. In fact, I was going to mention you, of course. Um, it's 8 a.m. Yes, Phil, it's 8 a.m. here. Um, I guess it's, are you 11 hours ahead? I can't remember. Um, the clocks go back here in the UK uh, this weekend, don't they, Tim? Uh, Chesh, good morning. Good day to you. Good day. So I've got my coffee. I've got my administrator biscuit. Uh, I'm sure you remember why we call it the Administrator Biscuit. And good morning, Peter, as well. Good morning, Peter. I just saw your tweet about um, that blog post that um, Wouter uh, posted just now, wasn't it? Was it today? About the destinations? That's uh, very, very strange, very spooky. Uh, I've not heard back, by the way, yet um, uh, in detail uh, internally, but I, I will I will keep uh, looking out for what's going on there. Good morning, Napit. Great to see you. I'm so glad you're back. Uh, welcome back, Napit, to the community and everything. I mean, you never left the community, but I mean, you know, I know you took this break, which is great. So 6 p.m. on a Friday, perfect time to start the weekend. Good morning, uh, Satya Sunil. Is that the, is that the correct uh, use and pronunciation, Satya Sunil? So, yeah, I'm super excited. Um, so thank you for thank you all for joining. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a slightly random one. Um, you know, we've we've just finished a series on uh, enterprise messaging uh, if you haven't caught that let me in fact let me just switch to the uh, main scene uh, if, if i go to sap devs uh, we just finished a series on enterprise messaging and there's a playlist uh, where is it oh that's quite interesting that's a little blue thing uh, where is it where is it where is it? oh it'll be long here won't it Cloud application programming model. Diving to messaging. There we go. Viewful playlist. I've just we've just finished that, haven't we? So if you missed that, check that out. Each of the individual episodes um, have got annotations. So for example, if you look at one of them, um, you'll see that for example, they've all got these. We had this debate as to what to call these. Uh, I can't remember what it was now. Uh, anyway, we've got these sort of time timestamps that you can have a look at. So. And we missed out a session last Friday because I was away on holiday. Uh, so I thought we'd start gently with a bit of fun. This is slightly random. I've not really prepared very much at all um, because this is all about what we collectively want to do. But before we dive into the subject of the day, which is, uh, of course, uh, customizing App Studio with dot files, uh, let us go to a bit of catch up. <coughs> Um, I know we're doing the uh, the SAP Developers News thing now every week, which is uh, good. Uh, but I'm still going to do a little bit of uh, you know pointing to things here in the uh, in the uh, live stream. So we're in week nine, just coming to the end of week nine, uh, the last week of the enablement content in Devtoberfest, right? Um, oh, Phil. Uh, so as a summary, DJ, what is enterprise messaging used for overall? Used for asynchronous loose coupling of services and applications and things that have to happen, um, mostly between systems and applications, not humans, <coughs> but of course humans can be involved as well. Um, yeah, you, you definitely do need to catch up with these sessions. You can run them about, about you know, the YouTube playback, you know, 1.25, 1 1.5 is pushing it a little bit, but 1.25 or whatever it is, 1.2, 1.25 speed, it's pretty good. Um, I know I talk fast anyway, but you can still uh, follow it at about that speed and get through it. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend it. I, I think we all enjoyed doing that series. 
and you can play with it. You know, um, it, there's a uh, it's it's deprecated at the moment, but it's still available, and you can play with enterprise messaging. There are two uh, messaging APIs: is the management API and the messaging API. So, but it's super important. Asynchronicity is the future. Um, I mean, it was a past as well. You know, this none of the the, the topics uh, that enterprise messaging covers are new, but they're super important. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, um, this is the last week of the enablement, as in the, the, the educational, let's call it, material. Uh, and we're just about to start October 23rd, which is today, right? Yes. At 18.30. Um, I don't know what time zone that's supposed to be. But anyway, basically it starts this evening. This weekend starts. So we've got a, a week of build. Okay, a whole week, Monday to Friday, bookended or bracketed by weekends as well. So it starts this coming Saturday, as in tomorrow, and uh, it finishes a week on Sunday. Okay, you've got a build week. Um, I'm sure you've been seeing the videos from my colleagues. I think I'm going to do one today as well about basically the build week is all about uh, building stuff, contributing to open source, either submitting your own uh, idea, as in your own repo uh, to the Devtoberfest thing, or if you, you know, if you want to do a smaller thing, have a look at what's already been submitted, and you know, do a little bit of a contribution. Maybe you know, uh, do a pull request, or fix some documentation, or add some documentation, or you know, whatever. Uh, so yeah, so just to, just to let you know, we're in week nine right now. There's some awesome material from GitHub from our friends at GitHub. Some really good uh, videos and some tutorials as well. Uh, so if you haven't seen those, check those out. Let me put the uh, topic page in there. Murat, good morning. Good morning to you. Vladimir's, uh, uh, this is how I'm watching all your videos. Now your voice sounds a little bit weird. I'm speaking very slowly. Uh, yes, it does sound a little weird. It always sounds weird. But anyway, so that's that. Okay. So what else have we got to show? Da, da, da. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, I know you know that I've been saying the terminal is the future. Future is terminal for ages. Um, if you are interested in uh, amping up your terminal skills, your shell skills, your scripting skills, uh, which these days in the day in the era of cloud is even more important than ever, right? Really cool uh, person, uh, Julia Evans. I think I, I, th I might have shared this last week. I don't know. It's still it was in my little um, it was in my little pull down hands on SCB Dev to share, but I don't know if I shared it or not. But anyway, Bork, uh, Julia Evans. She does some awesome things, e.g., um, you know, comics. Uh, so teaching about bash uh, in comic style. That's absolutely brilliant. So uh, check those out. Uh, follow her on Twitter. Uh, really, really cool. And finally, there's only one more thing to share. Fi yeah, finally, um, what we're going to be doing, and here's my sort of homepage on uh, GitHub. Uh, you can get links to all the most recent things. For example, I've got this new blog, Autodidactics, which I'm, I'm sort of talking about the the, the, th the cool things that I find out about relating to shell scripting and you know uh, nuances and things. I'm teaching myself stuff, uh, so that's that. But also, you know, my main blog, my blog on SAP Community, the hands-on SAP Dev things, the Tech Allowed podcast series. I've just recently was it this week, last week. I put out a new um, podcast episode where I read aloud stuff, uh, and, and I've, re I've read aloud a specific part of the uh, Unix uh, time sharing system retrospective document written by uh, Dennis. Was it Dennis Ritchie? Yes. Um, really, really interesting stuff to, to to listen to. So you can listen to that, listen to, or you can read it. Of course, there's a link there. Uh, so there we go. Well, that's that. So let's get started. Basically, the reason I'm showing you the uh, GitHub thing is because um, I've got a repository. I've had it for ages anyway, but I've been hacking around with it more recently than usual. Uh, more recently than usual, that's not the right phrase. I've been hacking it uh, more often, more recently. And this is the basis upon which we'll be um, you know, doing stuff together today. Uh, but... It's not just this one, Vladimir's. Hey, Max. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, Max. Good afternoon to Phil. Good. Uh, good morning, Max. To you. Good morning. Great to see you, Max the mechanic, um, with the spanner there. Uh, so, uh, Vladimir's, you have a dot files repo as well that you have also been hacking on in relation to uh, App Studio, right? So, if you've got the link, Vladimir's, share that. 
um, and uh, in the chat here, and I'll bring you up. But anyway, uh, what is the uh, what's the theme of this? This is customizing the SAP Business Application Studio. I'm going to call it the App Studio uh, with dot files. Now, what are we talking about? Well, um, if I go to my uh, trial account and I go to my uh, App Studio, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I go to my App Studio. Uh, I've deliberately sort of cleared out everything, uh, all my bit dev spaces, right? And the general idea is that I'm really excited about, you know, I'm, I, I, I love the terminal. Uh, somebody called me, who was it? Who was it that called me that crazy TTY guy, which I thought was the biggest compliment I've been paid all year. Uh, and the thing that excites me about uh, App Studio is that it gives us all a level playing field in terms of terminal. It gives us all the most powerful environment that we can that we can imagine for doing stuff in the cloud, uh, in our SAP enterprise uh, context, which is a shell, right? A, a bash shell. So that's why I'm super excited about the application studio, and also because you know it's it's like VS Code, and VS Code is a very comfortable environment to work in. Uh, so if you haven't already. Uh, set yourself up with a subscription to App Studio. It's basically when you go into your trial account, you can go into your subscriptions and turn on the subscription to App Studio and then come here. I'm going to create a dev space called um, Hands On and I'm going to base it on a basic one. I don't want any you know, fancy stuff at the moment. Uh, what I do want though, uh, and you can uh, basically all these diff uh, each of these dev spaces have sort of basic tool extensions and you can choose what other things you want to hear as well. By the way, I'm running my resolution. I, I've, uh, I've got a 4K monitor. I've reduced it back down to a single monitor. So I'm, I've upped the, uh, up the font size of Chrome uh, to 175%, so you can all see it hopefully properly. So that's why it's a bit weird here. Um, I'm gonna choose the MTA tools because you know everybody wants to have uh, access to those things because they're super important. And I'm gonna create a dev space. So let's do that. So you can all do this as well, right? Do it If you wanna do it at the same time on a separate screen, do that as well, uh, but basically, um, this will set up a dev space which will give us uh, all the the default facilities, the default extensions, and the MTA tools as well. Right. So let's go into that. Hands on. Right. Fine for me. Even, thank you. Thank you, Max. That's fine for you. That's good. So really nice, really comfortable, and uh, let's clear that thing there. Uh, Niels, good morning to you, Niels. Welcome, 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 welcome. So, anybody, uh, put it in the chat if you've already used the Application Studio, if you're what you're using it for, if you've uh, if you've explored what things you've explored, what things you like. Um, I've explored mostly the terminal. Uh, we we have access to this is what I'm talking about. We have access to the terminal. If you've ever used, for example, um, you know Google Cloud Platform, I was very excited when they brought along the Google Cloud Platform shell or Google Cloud shell or whatever it's called, which also gave me a terminal in the cloud. So basically, you know, I can go, uh, you know, go, to, go on, uh, well, not right now, but go and visit my mum, for example, down down south and, you know, just use her computer and use a browser and, you know, just got, get access to a terminal. Anyway, so new terminal, right? So I've got this terminal here and, you know, it's okay. Uh, it doesn't have any of my utilities. It doesn't have anything that's custom to me. It doesn't, you know, I mean, we've got the, for example, the CF command because uh, we chose to install the uh, MTA tools extension. Okay, so the MTA tools gives us, for example, CF. But all the things I like to use, um, like, uh, you know, uh, JQ, J, uh, what's it called? Um, JSON query, it's not there. Um, also, more more recently as well, in the cloud APIs um, uh, repo uh, that talks about cloud APIs and OAuth and everything, I've been doing a lot of uh, looking into what the access tokens are. And for that, there's a really nice command line tool called JWT or JWT. That's not there either. Also, you know, uh, my 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 Vim settings. You know, it's not it's not the, the thing I want, for example, you know, all right, there's an editor. Anyway, uh, and also the color, I don't like the color, maybe I'll change the color here, color theme, it's very nice to change the color theme, I'll change the color theme to, I don't know, Monokai Dimmed, for example. Ooh, yes, okay, that's better. Um, and the font is a little bit small, and so on, and 
and my key by I've got some, I could have some custom keys for example so open keyboard shortcuts so when you set up a dev space you know you can maybe do all these different things but it's you know it's it's a bit of work to sort of every time you create a new dev space and these dev spaces are sort of I suppose deliberately ephemeral you know they, they're designed to sort of live for a while until you finish with them you can throw them away and create a new one as you saw as you, or as you may have seen you can create a, you know in our uh, free trial accounts we can create up to two dev spaces have you can have one running at a time um and so you know it I, I, what i don't want to do is have to go in customize things every time right that's the whole idea um so in fact uh if i for example say well i want to find uh how to maximize a view so it's alt m i might want that to be i don't know um control control plus alt plus which is my preferred thing right so i can say that and now i can maximize that you know toggle the maximization of that of that which is quite nice right so but i don't want to have to do that manually as well oh lots of chat so oh Ooh, ooh, ooh. So Phil, love the terminal and the ability to run APIs. Directly. Yes. So Phil, what do, what do, what do you mean by run APIs directly? You mean with curl, for example, on the command line? By the way, as well, uh, Max was showing me this. Um, we have in the App Studio the ability to use the uh, is it called the REST client extension? So basically, you can create a .http file and define some uh, uh, some. Uh, HTTP calls and run them there, but you know I prefer to use curl, which is you know one of the things that's built in. Okay, so there's this is a proper you know echo uh, shell. It's a bash shell, echo um, bash version. It's it's a very up to date bash version. Okay, it's version five. Uh, so we get all sorts of goodness built in, but we you know it'd be nice to do things better, right? Um, oh, even more, even more, even more. So uh, Shakti, Shakti is currently developing UI5 custom applications on Visual Application Studio, deployed once to CP. Excellent, okay. What's your experience there? How does it compare if you've used the web ID? How does it compare? Um, Vladimir's, I was exploring a lot, not only Business Application Studio, but also Gitpod. Yes, so Gitpod is basically, for those who don't know, Gitpod is also, um, I don't know whether it's uh, from GitLab, but it's connected to, sorry, not GitLab, GitHub. Or is it GitLab? I can't remember. Um, well, GitHub, you can you go into a, into a repo on GitHub, or is it GitLab? I don't know. Press the GitPod button, or you go to GitPod and you put the repo name in, and it will bring you up a Thea-based IDE with that repo ready to edit in the cloud. This is, you know, I first came across sort of cloud-based IDEs back in the days of Bes Bespin or Bespin from Dion Almer and uh, Ben Black Galbraith. Uh, which was years and years ago. It was fantastic. It's like, oh my God. And then Cloud9 came along and that was awesome as well. So uh, yeah, really, really cool. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Yes, so um, exactly. So the whole idea and also GitLab, GitHub themselves now have the code spaces, which is VS Code in the cloud. And the, the, the really cool idea, which gave me this idea, uh, as well as Vlad Vladimir's, what Vladimir's was doing, is if you've got some dot files, GitHub will use your dot files repo to auto customize the code space when you set it up when you press the button and it comes up in the cloud so that's the sort of thing we want to try and do here right uh, Niels I'm exploring bass in general what is possible and what's not I love the terminal as well as the possibility it gives us developers yes Niels you're allowed to come on again that's fantastic yeah of course you're always welcome everybody's always welcome of course uh, but that's exactly uh, that's exactly my philosophy as well it totally it's the total power uh, that you have and the flexibility uh by the way you can't share the url oh ah oh, yes uh okay let me let me bring it up as well uh and yes i i don't know max do you know if there's a oh thank oh thanks max well done uh there's the uh, there's the url yes i think that the non sort of admin can't share urls i don't know i don't know why does it cut it out or does it just not make it into a into a um uh, link at all i don't know important once business application studio stops some stuff might be gone as a rook check yes ah yes so we can talk about that a little bit uh, in a little bit or maybe next time but yes so let me read out what vladimir has just said once the business application studio has stopped some stuff might be gone as a workaround i added a check in my bash rc and if my preferred cf plugin is not installed install it yes so i was talking to the awesome 
people who have been putting together the app studio for us and this sort of thing and i found that as well there was one particular uh directory that i'd created called uh i think it was local or dot local or something and that wasn't one of the directories that they were explicitly persisting in between stops and starts so there's a there's a fixed number of directories that are persisted for space reasons for obvious reasons um bin is one of them though so that yeah there are various things but i mean there are things that we probably want to do sort of on a you know when back when you start up a shell is does this exist does this symbolic link exist let's create anyway uh less talk dj more action so the general idea oh murat such commands mbt build and cf deploy much faster on business application studio when i compare to like vs code Ooh, now there's a thing that's really cool to know is that, the, is that ex the same experience for other people as well? That's really cool. That's really cool to know. I mean, yeah, I, uh, we're in the cloud, right? I'm not sure what the bandwidth between the cloud and, you know, uh, this is running in in, in, uh, uh, in on SAP Cloud Platform as well. So, you know, it's, it's sort of nearer, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, ah, okay. So, Max, you're saying there's no difference. Oh, there's my biscuit. That's super crumbly. I bought this bag of these... Amaretti biscuits, ages ago, they're in like this sealed jar, so it's still nice and crispy, crunchy. And they don't seem to be going down. It seems like this infinite, infinite supply of Amaretti biscuits, of uh, administratory biscuits. But anyway, so we've got a, a basic dev space opened here. And you've just seen me go through and, you know, oh, it's not quite right, and da, 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 and I haven't got my setting. So the general idea is that there's a there's a thing. Uh, oh, dot files dot files. Where where folks share their dot files. I've had this dot file repo for a long time. Uh, they share their dot files, uh, and we can learn from each other. We had a session on this on hands on ICB dev session a long long time ago when um, Ronnie came on and was talking about his dot files and and so on. But anyway. Um, here are my dot files. So if you go there, and this is what I'll be using. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff here. Uh, and I've been hacking on it this morning, actually, uh, just tweaking a few things. In fact, what, one hour ago, a simple symbolic link setup. But what I've got um, in here is uh, this thing called App Studio Setup, right? Which is a little script, okay? And the script looks like can we get it all on one screen? No. Looks like this, right? Experimental App Studio setup script. And there's also a thing uh, where you ins might install a command line tool and some install processes. Uh, processes is processes get you to basically uh, run a shell script that you've downloaded. Okay. Um, so there's a there's a, a, a cautionary. Uh, warning here to say, well, make sure you know what you're running when you download it and, and run it through your bash shell. Okay. Uh, certainly, certainly there should be alarm bells if you're required to run it as sudo, as root, right? But we don't need to do that. We're not doing that. We're just doing it as our own user. Okay. So invoke with curl, which is the command to download a URL, for example, app studio setup, which is this script. Okay and pipe that as it comes down, pipe it into bash, as in run it through bash, okay? So basically we're running this script in the terminal. Um, <clears throat> ah, so Max, I'm just here because I want to see how DJ uses Tmux in uh, Application Studio as I try to use Tmux more frequently. As far as I know, there's no way to get it working in. Oh, I've not actually tried Tmux in bash, uh, in, in App, App Studio, so we'll try that. So with that warning out of the way, uh, this is the script that we're going to be running. And also, let, remind me, somebody remind me in a couple of minutes to talk about um, bracketed paste mode. Okay, uh, it's quite important. I've just spoke to the uh, team, the App Studio team, uh, about that as well. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll tell you about that shortly. So basically, we've got some variables here. Where are we going to clone the dot files? So the idea is that we're going to clone this repo into the App Studio shell. Okay. Uh, because the, the shell persists, you know, Vladimir is talking about the idea that, they, that, you know, there's some things that don't persist, but generally your shell stuff, your environment persists between stops and starts. Otherwise, you know, you'd lose all your project, projects and so on. So I've got some variables here. I also want to back up some stuff. 
So um, as, as we can see here, uh, we've already got, let me just make this uh, full screen with my new uh, shortcut. This is what we get out of the box in a standard you know, shell, bash shell in App Studio. We get a bash logout, which is not very exciting. In fact, in fact, why don't we minimize that again and open a workspace. Let's use you know, App Studio uh, for what it really is. A user, let's go to user, home, home, user. Let's open the user workspace and have a look using App Studio. You know, physician heal thyself, App Studio, look at thyself. Um, so we've got in here, we've got a bash RC. We get that out of the box. And this looks like a very, very standard bash RC, which uh, RC, uh, run commands, these are things that that are executed when bash starts up. When you see a file with RC at the end, it's basically when this thing starts up, run these commands. All right. Um, hey, Fabiano, Fabiano, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so this is the standard one we get. I'm going to be replacing this bash RC with my bash RC. We get a bash logout as well, which you know uh, runs when you log out, obviously. We get npm. So in fact, you know we can see here we've got npm already installed as well. So that's really cool. Thank you, App Studio. Um, get rid of the plums as well. Uh, and but that's pretty much it. We got a profile as well, um, which is sort of it works with the bash RC. Uh, we're not going to get too much into the difference between profile and bash RC and bash profile and everything. We can read about that uh, separately. Um, so, um, so that's what we have. What we have. And there's also yeah, there's a Thea a dot Thea directory, and the key map I've just set to say you know use Control and Alt and backslash to maximize a panel. That's now been stored in keymax.json inside of there. And also I changed the theme right, so the workbench color theme is there. So when we do these configurations, things get stored in files in App Studio, in our, in our sort of workspace, right? So the idea is that I'm gonna clone this .files repo um, using this script and it will set things for me. So if we have a look at that, I'm gonna back up a few things. I'm gonna back up, uh, where is it? I'm gonna back up the, uh, do, 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 back up here we go I'm going to back up the uh, original bash RC which we just looked at and I'm going to back up any settings there okay so I've got that so the first thing I do is uh, I say bringing the dot files okay so we'll clone this this repo into a location which is dot dot files there then I'm also going to uh, create a symbolic link pointing the the bash RC in my dot files to where bash is expecting it to be which is dot bash rc and i've also got I've, I've recently reorganized all my bash rc content so in fact my bash rc if I open up in another window my bash rc looks like this which just goes through all the files it finds in a bash rc dot d directory and runs them right so all, I've organized it nice and neatly into a directory. So I've got all my path stuff in there, all my prompt stuff in there, for example. So it's all sort of, you know, nicely. Um, and I've even got an is say, I think, which I'll show you in a minute. So that's that. Uh, what else have we got? Da, 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 da. Yeah, so I set up a bash. Uh, this is a function to set up the backup directory and the executable directory, right? Um, in my dot files repo I've also got some settings so I've gone through you know setting up the, the the theme that I want and the font size that I want and the key map bindings that I want and I've saved those so now those are also in here right so if I go back you can see I've got a dot Thea directory and I've got some key maps and I've also got my own settings which changes the theme to Monokai. I don't know, is it Monokai dimmed at the moment? I can't remember, Monokai dimmed, yeah. I don't know. Um, font size 20 and an icon theme as well. Okay, so you can get, get the idea. And then I've also got uh, a little function that will install some utilities for me. Okay, so JQ, for example. Um, so I'm downloading JQ, I'm installing this Jot CLI, which will give me the Jot thing that we talked about earlier. And I'm also bringing in this bash git prompt, which will give me a nicer git, uh, a nicer prompt that will tell me about uh, a git repo if I'm in a git repo. 
And that's it. So basically, when, when this script starts, it runs main, okay, and it just sets up the directories, it backs up this file, it backs up this file, it sets up the dot files, it modifies the Thea settings by um, linking my settings.json and my keymaps.json in my dot files.thea directory to where the App Studio Thea is expecting them to be. And then I install those utilities. So let's do that. That's a lot of talk. Let's do that and see it happen. Okay. In fact, why don't we kill this one, right? Let's create a new one. Now, by the way, um, this is not, you know, this is just me, DJ, thinking, how can I best, let's kill this one, right? Uh, start completely from scratch. How can I best make my App Studio experience the best for me? Now, um, hello, let's call you hello basic. I'm gonna choose MTA again, because I love the MTA stuff, uh, but you can choose whatever you want. <coughs> um, and the general idea is that <clears throat> you can you can create your own dot files with your own settings. Maybe, do we need, I'm asking you now, tell me on the chat, do we need, do we want, <coughs> A, uh, a repo in SAP samples with a skeleton dot app studio dot files with this app studio script, for example. I mean, of course you can clone it from my, uh, get it from my dot files, but maybe we want like a more generic one that we can all clone and work on together. A bit like our messaging uh, repo that we had together. Tell me in the chat. But anyway, we've got this thing here. I'm gonna copy this command. Da -da 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 -da. Get rid of that, don't need that. There we go, so we got a brand new dev space. Uh, so let's bring up a terminal. By the way, that's uh, my favorite uh, keyboard shortcut, new terminal, control, back tick. And all we need to do is paste that in, bang, and run it. However, uh, I talked before about, you know, just being a little bit careful about, you know, when a website says, oh, paste this thing in, right, into a shell. Um, we've talked about the fact that, you know, if, if it's telling you to use sudo, you know, just check that what you're doing. But also, but also, but also, but also, what we really should be doing um, is, um, I, I like to use the, uh, the VI key bindings for the shell. What we really should be doing is pasting it into, oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Of course, we've got uh, Nano as a default editor, which... Okay, people like Nano, but I like Vim. So I'm gonna say export editor equals Vim. So now I can use, uh, I wanna paste the command into a buffer. Oop, paste, 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 paste. And then if there's anything sort of hidden in that, right, that the website has injected <clears throat> into that that you didn't see, You'll see it here, okay? So do this um, instead. And also, uh, also, 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 if we have a look at this thing here, where is it? Input RC, set enabled, set, <coughs> set enabled bracketed paste on. So if that is eventually set in the App Studio shell, then that should be uh, even safer for us. Uh, so I've I've uh, I've, I've, um, I've got that in my dot files as well. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So that's okay. That's all fine. We can run that, and there we go. Now that that didn't take long to happen at all, right? Okay, still it's good. In fact, it's still going. But did we see that happen? Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Let's go back. Okay, let's create a new one. These are ephemeral after all, and do it again. So we can do it, let's delete that one. And create a new dev space. My name, <laughs> names for the dev space are getting shorter and shorter. Awesome, Phil, so you, you tried it. Okay, um, uh, oh, wow, just pasted and hit enter and my bass changed. Yes, well done, Phil. Uh, that's great. That's great to know. Okay, so we got this running. Oh, I just love the App Studio. It's uh, really, really fast to, to uh, throw up new uh, dev spaces. So we go, we go into there. This is so. This is what Phil did as well. So I was I was just showing you. You don't have to go into uh, an editor to, to put the pasting in. You can just do that. That's right. Um, so let's bring up the terminal again. Let's bring it up there as well, so we can sort of see what's going on. Right there. Right. So what I did 
was that. So what we're doing is, in fact, instead of piping it into bash right now, let's just see exactly what's going on. Let's just pipe it into more. So it'll just, you know. So it, it basically brings down the contents of that script, right? So we can go through there. There we go. So that's basically grabbing the contents, that raw content of that script, that bash script. But now instead of pasting that into um, more, we'll paste it into bash, which will run it. Okay, so let's do that now. This is something that this is also what Phil you did, right? Oh, Niels, unfortunately, we are not allowed to install another shell. I'm a big fan of the fish shell with oh my fish plugin for a beautiful shell experience. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, I've not looked into installing other shells. I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask internally as well um, to see what the, 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 the strategy and philosophy is. Uh, I would like to know as well, although, of course, you know, the one true shell is bash. I've no idea what you're using fish for. Um, just kidding. Uh, Interesting that you've gone from bash, maybe you've gone from bash, I don't know, to fish and not to, z, uh, well, you call it ZSH, right? If you're American, ZSH, uh, Z shell, uh, which sounds right, okay. Uh, but uh, stick with bash, stick with bash. Bash is everywhere, right? Uh, you know, pick a shell, stick to it. That's what my philosophy. Anyway, anyway, right, so I'm going to run it. Ready? One, two, three, enter. So you can see the first thing is it's, it's doing the git clone, right? Well, it's downloading the actual script first of all, then it does all the things in the script. There we go. So let's just scroll up and have a look to see what happened, right? There, so there's our curl command, piped it into bash. And the first thing it did, let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the thing, App Studio setup, where is it? There. So the foot, these are all, I'm trying to write my shell scripts in a neat way, so I've just do some de de declarations. I've got my function definitions, and all the way down here, that's the first thing that gets executed, which is main, run main with any parameters passed, right? So the main is here, setup dirs, okay? So setup dirs is this one. It'll create a backup directory if it doesn't exist already, and it'll create the exec dir uh, if it doesn't exist already. By the way, this exec dir is slash bin. That persists, okay? So that's a directory that I know persists between stops and starts. So I put stuff in there, the JQ, for example, I put it in there. Um, so it does that, so that's silent, so we don't see any of that. What's the next thing it does? Uh, backup, it does a backup of that file and it backs up that file as well. So we'll just check that the, the backups are created. Then it sets up the dot files, okay? Set up dot files, okay? Set up dot files, git clone, right? So it does a git clone. So this, right, is the output of the clone okay so this bit here of course is the output of the actual curl command itself okay i, I might do a curl minus s for silent so we don't get that nonsense and then this is the result of the git clone clones it into where into dot dot files because we said to clone it into slash, uh, dollar home slash dot dot files right um you've oh niels you've used zsh before with oh my z shell but then i found fish and fell in love with it okay fair enough i'll let you off i'll let you off just this, just because it's you niels but i mean you know i think it's wonderful that uh, people like you uh, and us can be passionate about shells you know it's super important so kudos to you uh so the, uh, uh you refresh your ID and only I can see the changes. Only you can see the changes? I'm not sure what you mean there, Jodel. Uh, let me know, let me know. Um, so the next thing it does is it sets up the dot files, which you've just seen. Modify a Thea settings, which is this thing here, which is doing a symbolic, symbolic link for the settings.json and the keymaps.json. And then it finally installs some utilities, which is these things here. So let's just check out the results of that. There's the, there's the git clone, right? There's the output of the git clone. There's the, oh, that thing there, right, is the output of the download of the curl minus L for, you know, minus L is, you know, follow any redirects, downloading JQ, right, and puts it into target and makes it executable. So that's that. And then we've got also JOT. Um, so this is the result of the NPM install minus G global for the JOT CLI. Uh, this is also the part of the NPM, NPM in, excuse me, M, NPM install. And then here's the results of the bash git prompt install, right? Which is this one, git clone bash git prompt. Okay. So that sort of hopefully will, in fact, let's do a, let's do a, was it shift 
Command E will get rid of the thing there. Yeah, there we go. Dip, 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 dip. Quite nice. Um, keyboard shortcuts for the win. So that's it. So so we've cloned everything, right? And you can see, and as, as Phil said as well, um, it changes App Studio straight is dev space straight away. Uh, and that's because the Thea settings were uh, applied straight away. You know, they're sort of immediate. So Jodel, you're saying, when you invoke the command on the terminal, uh, it didn't change my App Studio. I tried refreshing the browser and only a change got reflected. We, I, I, so is this, I, so Jodel, what, what is, the, so you're using the same command as me, right? Is that correct? Um, let me know, let me know, Jodel. Uh, we can, of course, you know, continue to sort of, you know, debug this together on the on the comments here, after the, on the on the video and everything, or even, you know, on Twitter or whatever. So yeah, let me know, let me know what you're doing. Um, so now, of course, uh, some of these things, for example, the bash git prompt only take effect when you reload the bash shell, of course, and also my dot files, all the dot files. So in fact, let's have a look, let's have a look. Now, if we go into here, we can see, uh, in fact, we're just looking here, we're just looking instead, right? LS minus L, more, let's pipe it in some more. We can see that we haven't really, we've got the bin directory now, so what's in bin? We've got JQ in bin, so we can now run JQ. No, we can't because we still need to log out of this shell and log back in a new shell, right? Because then the bash RC will run. So let's do that now. So let's just go to control D to leave the shell, bring up a new a terminal with that one there. Um, a slight weirdness with the, I'm just hacking on this this morning, slight weirdness with the shell prompt itself. But anyway, we'll do that in a minute. But now if we look, we've got the bin. In bin, we've got JQ. So we can say JQ. And we've got JQ available to us now. We've also got Jot available to us now. We've also got, if we go into our dot files, hopefully, there's our dot files that we've just cloned into. We can see that from the bash git prompt, we can see, oh yeah, it's all clear. We're on we're on the master branch. Uh, we got the, uh, everything is sort of in line. I need to change that to main, by the way. That was a reminder to self. Um, uh, what else have we got? What else? Well, in fact, if we do an ls minus la to show us all, even including the dot files, we've got, if I scroll up, we got, uh, ah, oh, ah, oh, hold on. That's not right. We got, oh no, we, yes, of course it is right. I'm in the wrong directory. LS minus L, there we go. LS minus LA. There, we got more files. We got the App Studio setup backups, which is the backups directory that we told it to create and put files in. So let's have a look in there, right? AppStudio.backups, uh, AppStudio.backups, we've got the bash RC file. There wasn't a settings, uh, Thea settings default because we hadn't changed any settings, right? Uh, what else have we got? What else have we got? Let's see. Uh, we've got our bash git prompt. We've got our bash history, uh, which was already there. We've got the bash logout, which was already there. We've now got a new bash RC, right? Which is not the original one. It now points to our bash RC in our dot files directory. Okay, and that's the one that runs through all these, the ones we saw in my, my dot files repo, runs through all these different things here. So we've got that. We've also got our bash rc.d. And we've also got, for example, our um, dot thea directory. I'm getting so excited, I can't type which has got keymaps.json and settings.json, which are not sort of local, as in, you know, created here. They're created in the dot files and we're pointing to them, okay? So for example, if I change, if I were to change, let's go into the dot files directory and I've got all my scripts now as well, dot goes in the dot files directory. Um, I can change, if I say, well, in fact, uh, why don't we open the workspace? Let's open this this thing as the workspace itself. Let's open our user as the workspace. You know, we can use Vim to edit edit this, which is you know that's more of a, a DJ thing, I guess. I guess we probably want to edit it in the App Studio itself. So let's go into the dot dot files. Let's go into Thea. Let's go into settings.json. And if I change the font size to ten, oop, ten, save that. There we've now got. Uh, is that, oh yeah, of course, um, 
the font size on the terminal. Uh, does that change? Terminal uh, integrated font size 10. Oh, interesting. Maybe that only changes when we restart. By the way, actually talking of restarting, see, by the way, also, by the way, by the way, this is me in a normal, I've no idea what I'm doing. I'm sort of you know, learning by doing uh, together with you. Oh, Vladimir, Vladimir, uh, in my case, symlinking files was not working as I would expect. Therefore, instead of my doc files, I'm copying their files. Ah, interesting. Okay. Well, I've only just started to symlink. Why don't we restart? Okay. Why don't we restart this and see what happens? So let's um, go back to the original sort of the, the dev spaces overview page. Let's stop it and let's find out what happens. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. So let's find out. Jodel, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, you know, why should anybody else? Restarting, restarting, restarting. But it's fun, right? Good morning, Sumit. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. I think we're just on, just at the, ah. Oh. Oh, got a pain right through my, Oh, I don't know what's going on. Oh, it's gone, I think. Go, in. Go on, go away, pain. Whew, I don't know what happened there. Uh, they are... Did you hear the crunch? Did you hear Did you hear the crunch? Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, there we go. So, yes, so the, the Thea terminal settings now change on a restart. Now, that's interesting. Let's see... Well, first of all, let's see if my maximize. There we go. The maximize works, right? So that means that the the Thayer settings the key maps are still there. So through a restart, these symbolic links have persisted. So is that not your experience, Vladimir's? That's interesting. I mean, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't persist. Uh, because the .thea directory itself is, of course, a core directory in the App Studio Dev Spaces shell. Um, so check it out. I'll maybe have a go at my uh, dot files and see see what you get with you know with a, create a new dev space temporarily. Try mine out and see what happens. And let me know. It'd be really good to know. Um, so is is this something? Is this something? Generally, uh, let's go into the dot files. Uh, mm, let's go into. Ah, interesting, interesting. So what is not happening here? Ah, ah. okay, they're gone. Okay, so we need to look into that as well. Now, that's interesting. Look what's happened, I've just noticed. I was wondering why the, 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 the user prompts there, let's just make this bigger, right? Um, uh, let's just, da, 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 da. let's put the font size to be bigger again. But the, yeah, the font size, color theme, keyboard shortcuts, preferences, uh from preferences font terminal uh 10 let's put it back to 20 again there we go right fine um preferences dong now the interesting thing is the interesting thing is that the user prompt is not sort of slightly broken that i i'd broken it but also, look at this. Bash RC looks like it's been overwritten. 947, which is 847, which is just now, just after the restart. Interesting. Interesting. So it looks like, and what's in this Bash RC? Oh. That is the normal default Bash RC. So we need to figure out how to either work around that or or at least have that 
Hmm. So if I say, now, we want this basically, link, uh, symbolically, force it, dot files, bash rc, to bash rc. And then go in again. Oop. Go in again. There, now it's working. Now it's running. I can, I can go into the dot directory. There we go. Uh, and we can see this is this is sort of now our proper bash rc or my proper bash rc because I've screwed up this thing here. Uh, we'll deal with this thing. These are supposed these are supposed to be Unicode characters, uh, a bit like these things here. Whoop, whoop. Uh, but they're not working. Uh, I need to look at the Unicode here. So good morning, Rolling Basti. I just want to say hello and thank you again for the great stickers. They oh brilliant. Okay, I was just wondering whether they arrived. If anybody wants any any stickers, by the way. Let me know. Let me show you the stickers we've got. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so we've got stickers. Da, 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 da. We've got some hands on SME dev stickers still. Da, da, da. Courtesy of the awesome Ronnie. Lots of those. Um, I've got a few cap stickers. And I've got also loads of. Can you tell I'm married to somebody who likes their designer things? There's a Vivian Westwood box and a Jimmy Choo box. I've got tons of these awesome developersb.com stickers. So send me a message, a massage, Twitter DM probably, with your address if you want some of these stickers. Make sure when you send the address, you put sort of pipe symbols in between where, where the new lines are supposed to be in the address. Otherwise, I don't know how to write it on the envelope uh, some, in some cases. Um, so, uh, yes, so thank you, uh, Rolling Basti, and welcome. They arrived safely in Germany. Brilliant. So, Vladimir, I have a feeling when you stop workspaces, it's copying all your files, bins to temp folder and copying back when you start it. Yes, I'll check Qmacro merchandise. Yes. Uh, I've, got, I've got a mug in there. I've got a mug here and a mug in there uh, with um, hands on SB dev that uh, I got from um, from Alex Ellis when we did the OAuth stuff. Uh, so anyway, 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 uh, this is a work in progress, as you can see. So Vladimir, you, yes, I think I think you might be right. So I'm going to talk to the uh, awesome App Studio people to see if we can do something about this. Who knows? I mean, is it worth it? Do we want to carry on with this sort of direction here? Um, are we interested in in sort of tweaking our our uh, App Studio experience and terminal and shells and everything with dot files? Is this thing? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. Um, if it, if it, if it's not interesting, then you know we'll move on to something else. But I'm going to carry on with this from a personal perspective. Uh, I just need to know. I just like to know if you want to carry on with this as well. You know, over the course of the next few. I don't mean you know every week, but you know occasionally, maybe a share a repo or something. Um, Max, are you still there? Is Tmux there? Tmux isn't there. Okay, so we need to install Tmux as well. So we'll do that maybe next time. Next time I hack, uh, do a, one of these hack sessions. So I guess um, I guess we'll stop there for now. In fact, I am curious as to um, just that minute. Yeah. By the way, one of the one of the nice things I've changed in my prompt is that when something doesn't work and it returns a return code of not zero. I put the little prompt symbol as red. Um, I got that idea from uh, Kate. There's a pe person on Twitter I follow called Kate Things Kate Did. Awesome, awesome person with awesome uh, shell skills. So I got that idea from her. Uh, but anyway, let me just have a quick look at why bash rc.d, oh, hold on, vim bash rc.d. Um, 30 prompt. Why that's because I thought I was checking if it is Thea. Yeah, I mean, I basically these these characters here you can see on the prompt here user 2570, user 2500, right? Those are here, 2570, right? And the other things as well, 256D. Those are these um, curly lines you can see on the left of my little cursor there, right? So that's what they are. Uh, and I'm trying to sort of get them into the, the shell prompt 
in the dev space, but I can't seem to get Unicode working at the moment, but that's probably something I'm doing wrong. Uh, so I'm looking at that. So in the meantime, I'm sort of saying, well, if it's Thea, then just have a normal prompt rather than the prompt with these Unicode, these red Unicode characters. But that's not working. I don't know why it's not working. I've, I've changed it this morning. That's probably why it's not working. Um, so I've got this is Thea, right? Let's just do that. Um, so cat, cat, there we go. Um, this, let's just define that. Well, actually, what we could do. Mm, yeah, we could say we could source that is Thea. Let's run that. And echo yes. Yes, it is Thea. So why is that putting that stuff in there? What am I, what am I doing wrong? And we've only got a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. Let's just do echo. This is Thea. This is not Thea. Oh, oh. Echo. Let's just go out there, bring them on back again. This is not Thea. Oh, wait a minute. Why is it saying this is not Thea? Oh, um. Uh, it's in the doc files directory. What's going on? What's going on? Da, 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 da. Um, let's just get rid of that bracketing for a second and bring it back in again. There we go. Ah. So shell check is a fantastic thing. Shell, let me tell you about shell check. Oh, actually, it's not there, is it? It's here. Wait a minute. There's one thing you look at this weekend is shell check. Uh, even though it sort of put me on the wrong path uh, just now. But shell check is the most awesome thing. Where's the chat? Here it is. There's the blog post. Um, it helps me improve my shell scripting. It's, it's basically like a linter for bash shell scripting. There we go. So that's better. So let's get rid of the, um, the echo. That one and that one. Oops. That's better. That's better. Okay, so now I can go to dot. I can, for example, uh, what else have we got here? List dot files scripts. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, Vic Appify. There we go. So it's all there. It's all there. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Um, so that's it. So let me know in the chat or in the comments or on Twitter whether you want to carry on with this. I think it's definitely worth personally persevering with, but let me know. Okay, well, have a great Friday. Uh, have a great weekend. Don't forget, Build Week is pretty much starting in the next few hours. There, Build Week. Put that there. You have a git prompt setting. Can we see? Yes, you can see it before we go. Yes, let's see it. So the git prompt setting, uh, Jodel, I'm using bash git prompt. And so if you have a look at the um, uh, git prompt, in fact, bash rc, uh, where is it? Bash rc, there we go, bash rc.d. In the um, prompt section, I'm using this git bash integration. Uh, Git prompt, and so I can then call the git prompt in my prompt command to show what the state of the git repo is in the directory I'm in if I'm in one. Okay, uh, have, have a play with it. Hey, Tiago, welcome by the way. Um, yeah, it was a bit random, but uh, you know, let's just like hack on it together and see where we can get to. Okay, bye for now. Have a great time. <laughs>